2021 demanded the best of Santa Barbara County government. We've continued to show resiliency and make great progress through innovation to serve our citizens through seemingly endless challenges. County government is on the front line fighting the pandemic, expanding healthcare, ensuring safety net services, and providing public safety and emergency operations. The Public Health Department led efforts to vaccinate and protect our most vulnerable and hardest to reach communities, and the Board of Supervisors dedicated tens of millions of dollars in direct assistance to households, businesses, and nonprofit partners. Through the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, the county is receiving $86.7 million for community recovery needs and COVID response costs, with an emphasis on equity and inclusion in service delivery and serving underserved and low-income communities. The board allocated $29.8 million to Health and Human Services, primarily funding for homeless initiatives in 2021, with additional allocations coming in 2022. These funds are helping strengthen mental health and other critical safety net services, community recovery, and investments in critical infrastructure, such as water, sewer, and broadband projects. The pandemic impacted certain communities more severely than others, underscoring the need for a health equity-centered approach. Farm workers starting to come in, yeah. field workers starting to come in, so I feel like the word is getting out, which is really nice because that part of our community is lacking. We've invested in a multifaceted bilingual information campaign to the Latinx community to combat harmful misinformation and fears and help community members protect themselves with knowledge and access to vaccines and testing. Mobile health care providers vaccinated farm workers and residents in rural communities, while partnerships with organizations like MICOP support community outreach. Other initiatives help those in long-term care facilities, homebound, and the homeless. To ensure citizens with limited English proficiency are engaged and have meaningful access to programs and services, we're expanding our capacity system-wide. Board meetings are broadcast live in English and Spanish, and ARPA funding will bolster professional interpretation and translation services to support meaningful and inclusive access. To understand and address individual bias and systemic issues of racism, an internal training program called JOIN includes learning labs for staff and leadership is addressing the need for greater diversity in our workforce. The county received nearly $30 million in federal funds to help thousands of renters financially impacted by COVID-19. And later, we received an additional $27 million from the state for emergency rent assistance. As the pandemic continues to impact our community, we requested $37 million of reallocated federal funds for continued rental assistance in fiscal year 2022-23. Through the county social services department, CalFresh Food Aid and medical health coverage benefited more than 175,000 county residents every month, which is an increase of 7% over last year. Using local, state, and federal funds, people experiencing homelessness were provided a safe place to isolate and reduce the spread of COVID-19. In 2021, we created 374 rapid rehousing slots and added 86 permanent units, 215 long-term rental subsidies, and 142 temporary housing beds. 50% of those sheltered at Project Room Key transitioned to permanent supportive housing. In Isla Vista, we purchased a former dormitory to provide interim housing with 50 beds, while a three-year, 33-bed temporary shelter is opening in downtown Santa Barbara in early 22, in partnership with Good Samaritan Shelter, Dignity Moves, and Santa Barbara City Leaders. Since the pandemic began, nationwide data indicates heightened instances of mental health crises and substance use. Behavioral Wellness is leading a broad assessment of the community to determine local impacts and needs. Funding will be used to develop a three-year countywide intervention plan to address issues identified in the assessment survey that generated more than 5,000 responses. To divert persons in mental health crisis from the criminal justice system and into treatment, Co-response teams for behavioral wellness and the Sheriff's Office are successfully reducing unnecessary arrests and hospitalizations and the number of responding deputies and their time on scene and diverting more individuals to treatment. The co-response program has buy-in and support from all public safety departments, family members, and advocacy groups. 
Several high-profile capital improvement projects were completed this year. After five years of construction, the Northern Branch Jail was dedicated on November 18. It began as a quest for solutions to address the significant overcrowding problem in the main jail, but it evolved into a way of finding smarter and more effective ways to incarcerate and reform offenders, reduce recidivism, and make our community safer. The 376-bed modern efficient facility improves daily operations for custody staff and inmates with improved capability for mental health and rehabilitative services, including 32 special use beds. We also broke ground on a combined county fire station and sheriff's substation in Kuyama to replace the previous fire station 27. And a regional fire dispatch center moved one step closer with the board's approval in November to proceed with partner agency agreements. Already signed on are the Montecito and Carpinteria Summerlin Fire Departments and the cities of Santa Barbara and Santa Maria. And in 2021, the board heard several updates on efforts to enhance efficiency, diversion from jail, and transparency through collaborative criminal justice efforts. The Resource Center at the Tahegas Landfill opened in July. The state-of-the-art waste management facility will increase our community recycling rate to above 85% while generating resources such as green energy and compost and dramatically lower local greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to taking 29,000 cars off the road. The county's One Climate Initiative and development of our 2030 Climate Action Plan seeks to reduce emissions to 50% below 2007 levels by the year 2030. Under the One Climate umbrella is a new Community Choice Energy Program providing residents with a choice when it comes to buying electricity. The county joins Central Coast Community Energy, or 3CE, which is committed to sourcing 100% of its energy supply from clean and renewable resources by 2030. 3CE revenues stay local, keeping electricity rates affordable for customers while funding energy programs that lower greenhouse gas emissions and stimulate economic development. We met a target set in 2014 of ensuring at least $20 million was allocated to annual road, park, and facility maintenance. This amount will continue to grow to cover deferred maintenance, accessibility improvements, and energy efficiency upgrades. Critical needs for the community, such as libraries, alternative energy projects, improvements to parks, roads, and public facilities, and housing and homelessness programs, received funding from cannabis tax revenue. The board also appropriated $2 million of cannabis tax revenue toward preserving the San Marcos Foothills Preserve and $1.5 million to develop soccer fields in Santa Maria. Fire threatened our community once again when the Alisal Fire began on October 11. The fire burned nearly 17,000 acres on the Gaviota Coast, destroyed 12 residences, and caused significant damage to the watershed and multi-million dollar Tahegas Resource Center. While the fire still burned in the backcountry, a rain event was forecasted with potential for flooding and debris flows in the fresh burn scar, resulting in the area's first post-fire evacuation order in October. A second weather-induced evacuation order was issued a mere six weeks later. Through our multi-year Renew 2022 initiative, we've achieved millions of dollars in efficiency through waste reduction, time savings, cost avoidance, and cost reduction, migrated more than 80% of our services online or in digital format where feasible, and trained more than 250 employees in a Lean Six Sigma model to cut waste. We did this while embracing a more inclusive workforce that is reflective of the communities we serve. Looking ahead, we will continue to focus on our public health response and health equity improvements, broader community recovery, and efforts to reduce homelessness. Progress will continue on major capital projects like replacing the county's public safety radio system, developing a new probation department headquarters, and the main jail will undergo renovations for American Disability Act modifications and repairs and other upgrades. Leading with a clear vision and culture built on core values and practices guided us through the challenges of 2021 and prepares us for the future as we continue to grow and evolve in a post-pandemic world. Together, we are one county, one future.